The basal ganglia are a collection of nuclei within the brain, a nuclei being a cluster of neuronal cell bodies. They thought to play an important role in many different functions, including movement control and learning. The four main components are the striatum, the globus pallidus, the subthalamic nucleus, and the substantia nigra. The striatum is the largest part of the basal ganglia. It consists of two connected clusters of cell bodies, the chordate nucleus and the putamen, separated by a fiber tract. The vast majority of cells in the striatum are medium spiny neurons, which are inhibitory neurons. The globus pallidus, meaning pale globe, is a single cluster of cell bodies. However, there are two distinct populations of cells which participate in two separate circuits, the internal globus pallidus and the external globus pallidus. The cells in the globus pallidus are also inhibitory. The subthalamic nucleus is a small lens-shaped nucleus, and its cells are mainly excitatory. The final nuclei is the substantia nigra, named black substance because of its high levels of neuromelanin. It is composed of two parts, the substantia nigra pars reticularis and the substantia nigra pars compacta. The input unit of the basal ganglia is the striatum, which receives innervation from virtually the entire cerebral cortex, the thalamus, and the limbic system. The output units are the substantia nigra pars reticularis and the internal globus pallidus, which send projections to the thalamus, which in turn projects back to the cortex, forming a loop. The classic model of the connections between the nuclei in the basal ganglia is the direct and indirect pathways model. In this model, there are two important pathways of connections between the nuclei, the direct pathway and the indirect pathway. The overall effect of the direct pathway is to stimulate the cortex. The cortex provides excitatory input to the striatum, which then provides inhibitory output directly to the internal globus pallidus and the substantia nigra pars reticularis. These then provide inhibitory input to the thalamus, which has excitatory connections back to the cortex. If the direct pathway is stimulated, the striatum is excited, increasing its inhibition of the internal globus pallidus and substantia nigra pars reticularis. As these areas are inhibited, the output is reduced. This means they are less able to inhibit the thalamus, and the thalamic output reaches the cortex and excites cortical neurons. The overall effect of the indirect pathway is the opposite of the direct pathway, inhibition of the cortex. The indirect pathway takes a longer, more indirect route from the striatum to the internal globus pallidus and substantia nigra pars reticularis by going through additional components, the external globus pallidus and the subthalamic nucleus. In the indirect pathway, the striatum still receives excitatory input from the cortex. However, the striatum then sends inhibitory projections to the external globus pallidus. The external globus pallidus then sends inhibitory connections to the subthalamic nucleus, and the subthalamic nucleus sends excitatory inputs to the substantia nigra pars reticularis and the internal globus pallidus. These again inhibit the thalamus, which sends excitatory inputs to the cortex. When the indirect pathway is stimulated, the cortex excites the striatum. The striatum then inhibits the external globus pallidus. Now that the neurons in the external globus pallidus are inhibited, they are less able to inhibit the neurons of the subthalamic nucleus. This enables the subthalamic nucleus to excite the substantia nigra pars reticularis and allow it to inhibit the thalamus, thus preventing it from exciting the cortex. The balance of activity between the direct and indirect pathways is modulated by dopamine. The substantia nigra pars compacta contains neurons which use dopamine as their neurotransmitter. These neurons project to the medium spiny neurons of the striatum. The cells of the direct pathway have D1 dopamine receptors. When dopamine binds to these receptors, it excites the neurons, making them more likely to fire. Dopamine therefore increases the activity of the direct pathway. In contrast, cells of the indirect pathway have D2 dopamine receptors. When dopamine binds to these receptors, it inhibits the neuron, making it less likely to fire. Dopamine therefore decreases the activity of the indirect pathway. The direct and indirect pathway model has been most successfully applied to the control of movement. Imagine a section of the cortex controlling movement projects to the basal ganglia, which then projects to the thalamus and back to the motor cortex in a loop. If the direct pathway is activated most strongly, then that section of motor cortex is excited and the motor program it encodes is activated, sending impulses to muscles resulting in a movement. In contrast, when the indirect pathway is most strongly activated, it inhibits the corresponding section of the motor cortex, preventing a motor program from becoming active and inhibiting movement. 
The direct and indirect pathways model has also been successfully applied to a number of diseases which affect motor control. Parkinson's disease is a neurological condition of unknown cause, which results in destruction of the dopaminergic cells in the substantia nigra pars compactor. This means we lose the action of dopamine, exciting the direct pathway and inhibiting the indirect pathway. This results in an imbalance towards overactivity of the indirect pathway and underactivity of the direct pathway. This means motor programs are now excessively inhibited, and this leads to difficulty initiating movements, and thus the characteristic slow movements and rigidity of Parkinson's disease. The model can also help explain the treatments of Parkinson's disease. The main drug treatment is levodopa. This is a chemical that can be converted to dopamine in the brain, which can act to restore this balance between the direct and indirect pathways. If drug treatments fail, a further option is deep brain stimulation. This is where an electrode is inserted into the subthalamic nucleus. When the electrode is turned on, it creates an electrical field, which prevents nearby neurons from firing. This removes the excessive inhibition of the thalamus from the indirect pathway. The model can also help explain Huntington's disease. Huntington's disease is a genetic condition characterized by an autosomal dominant mutation in the Huntington gene. This mutation leads to the loss of cells in the striatum and the cells which are lost are mainly part of the indirect pathway. As neurons in the indirect pathway die, it becomes less effective at inhibiting the thalamus. This also results in an imbalance, but this time in favor of the direct pathway, which is now much more active than the indirect pathway. This results in an excessive activation of motor programs and causes excessive abnormal movements, known as chorea, which are characteristic of Huntington's disease. Unfortunately, no treatments have been found to be consistently effective at treating Huntington's disease, although there is some evidence for tetrabenazine. Normally, dopamine is transported into vesicles by the vesicular monoamine transporter 2 protein. Vesicles filled with dopamine then fuse with the neuronal cell membrane and dopamine is released into the synaptic cleft. This dopamine can then diffuse across the synaptic cleft and bind to dopamine receptors, producing its effects. However, tetrabenazine blocks the vesicular monoamine transported 2 protein. This prevents dopamine from being loaded into vesicles. This means no dopamine is released when vesicles fuse with the cell membrane, and dopamine is unable to activate dopamine receptors. Tetrabenazine therefore acts to reduce the effects of dopamine, reducing its excitation of the direct pathway and its inhibition of the indirect pathway. This helps shift the balance back, reducing the underactivity of the indirect pathway and the relative overactivity of the direct pathway, and may result in some improvement in the symptoms of Huntington's disease. In conclusion, the basal ganglia are a collection of nuclei within the brain. They form part of a loop between the cortex, basal ganglia, and thalamus. One of the classic models of the basal ganglia is the direct and indirect pathways model. In this model, there is a direct pathway which acts to excite the thalamus and thus excite the cortex, and an indirect pathway which acts to inhibit the thalamus and thus the cortex. This model has been successfully applied to disorders of movement, where it has been able to explain some of the key features of Parkinson's disease, which is due to excessive overactivity of the indirect pathway and insufficient activity of the direct pathway, and Huntington's disease, which is due to insufficient activity of the indirect pathway.